It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and passing the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you want to publish system metrics to Google Cloud from a large number of on-prem hypervisors and VMs for analysis and creation of dashboards. You have an existing custom monitoring agent deployed to all the hypervisors and your on-prem metric systems is unable to handle the load. You want to design a system that can collect and store metrics at scale. You don't want to manage your own time series database. Metrics from all agents should be written to the same table, but agents must not have permission to modify or read data written by other agents. What should you do? So we have a custom monitoring agent and we want to be able to ingest a lot of data, time series data, and ensure that these agents have the ability to write the data to a common table, but not modify each other's. Let's look at the requirements in a little more detail. So we have to design a system that can collect and store metrics at scale. This metrics is time series data and we are expecting a lot of it. So a solution should be able to scale. What they have seen already is that the current on-prem metric system cannot handle the load. So the primary problem is that it chokes at scale. One clear requirement is that this customer does not want to manage their own time series database. So they want to reduce the amount of management and administration which means that they should be using a managed solution. The data should be stored in the same table. So all the agents are going to be writing to the same table. So this would ease the process of analysis so that you can run the query on the same table. But the requirement is additionally that even though multiple agents are writing data, they should not have the ability to modify each other's data. So there should be some segmentation or some other way in which it does not allow these agents to modify the data in the table. With that understood, let us look at the options. So all of them start with the statement that we modify the monitoring agent. Okay, so let's take this as a given. Right? We know how to modify the agents, a custom agent anyway, so we can do that. So based on that, we will see only the remainder of the options. Let's mix up how we look at the options in this case. Option D suggests that we write protobuf messages to cloud pops up. Then we use either a data proc or data flow job to consume messages from pops up and write to Cassandra deployed on GCE VM instances. Now, Using protobuf to send the data could reduce bandwidth use. There's less data to send if you use protobuf because of binary protocol. So it reaches you faster and there's less cost of network. That's a good thing to have. To have a front end uh, endpoint that is pubs up is very useful because it scales to the kind of load that is required. So the monitoring agent now sends protobuf messages to PubSub. That works well for us. From PubSub, we can read either using data proc or data flow and receive and consume and process the messages. So this would work. Now, of course, there is additional work to write the jobs for data proc or data flow, but it is viable and we can do that. So, so far, it's good. Now, where are we writing this data? This option suggests that we write it to Cassandra. But Cassandra is not a managed service. And a requirement clearly states that we don't want to be managing the database. And since Cassandra has to be administered manually, we will have to eliminate option D because it does not suit our requirement. So option D is out. Option C suggests that we modify the monitoring agent to write protobuf messages, which so far we've seen is good because it reduces the bandwidth and makes it fast. 
And where are we writing the data? Option C wants us to write the data to HBase deployed on a Google Compute Engine instance. Now, this has the same problem as Cassandra. Neither Cassandra nor HBase is a managed service. And we don't want to take that additional administrative overhead. Therefore, option C also is out. Option A suggests that we publish the protobuf messages to cloud pops up. Then we use dataproc cluster or a dataflow job to consume messages from pops up and write it to big data. Option B already gave us a fairly good view of this. Writing protobuf messages uh, or creating protobuf messages is good because it will reduce the amount of data sent and it will save us potentially speed and also network costs. So even though we could use say JSON or XML or whatever, to use protobuf would be good. It's very acceptable and it's useful for us. Then it is going to pops up. Pops up again, like we saw, can scale easily and and expand or um, accept a large amount of data, even huge spikes in data. So, so far it is looking good for us. The next part is to use either data proc or data flow. As we saw earlier, there is now additional work to write these jobs, but then it is doable. Right? So we can read the messages from PubSub, process it, and then write it to a storage, which in this case is big data. Now, Bigtable is a managed service, so that's good for us, and it scales very well to large amounts of data. It is also able to do reads and writes at high speed, which works for the kind of load that we have here. Remember that the on-prem metric system had an issue that is unable to handle the load, right? but Bigtable can. Moreover, Bigtable is the recommended choice for time series data. So when you're working on Google Cloud, and if you have a requirement to uh, save time series data, then Bigtable should be one of your um, first choices. Since we've got thumbs up on pretty much everything, this option suits us very well. And we are going to park that for now because we haven't seen option B also. Um, let's keep that aside. and consider the last option, which is option B. Option B suggests that we modify the monitoring agent to write protobuf messages directly to Bigtable. So we saw that using protobuf messages is useful because it compresses the data and could be fast. We also saw that Bigtable is a managed service. That's great. And it also scales very well. Bigtable is also the recommended choice of time series data. Now there is no pub sub here. Option A had a pub sub, but then we don't necessarily need it because Bigtable itself can scale very well for multiple or large amounts of reads and write. So this becomes a very simple solution where the monitoring agent directly writes to Bigtable, doesn't require pub sub and doesn't require data proc or data flow. However, the problem is that if we give the monitoring agent direct access to Bigtable, it can, of course, write data that it has to send in, but it also gives them permission to edit and delete other parts of the uh, table. So this option, even though simpler, breaks a basic requirement of having a shared table with siloed edits. Right? An agent should be able to insert his data, but not modify anybody else's data. With this particular option, we can't control that. Therefore, we are going to have to eliminate option B. The only option that remains therefore is option A, which includes a little extra work, but allows for the requirement that we do not allow the agent to modify anybody else's data. Okay. So you publish protobuf messages to PubSub, which can absorb that kind of growth and have additional jobs that process the data and write it out to big data. So the monitoring agent doesn't directly write it. There is something else in between that writes that, which means the agent cannot modify anybody else's data. 
and therefore option A works the best for this requirement. Well, how are you going to inform others of the super GCP content? Just one way, like it, share it, let them get to know of it, and you, you subscribe. Mm -hmm.